Uh, welcome to Center of Maths basic series on real analysis. Today we're going to talk a little bit about differentiation. So given a function f, which is a real valued function defined on a, an open subset of the real numbers, we say f is differentiable if the uh, uh, fraction f of x minus f of x naught over x minus x naught. Uh, the limit of that as x approaches x naught from in whatever se uh, sequence. Uh, if that limit exists, then, then uh, it is defined to be equal to the derivative f prime of x naught. Uh, so this is the usual, this is a very common definition for a derivative. It's just saying as you get close to uh, f of, as f of x gets close to f of x naught, uh, then it kind of looks like a, a line there with some slope. So it's kind of f prime x naught is like the, the slope at that point. Uh, and so, yeah, so if this limit exists. We say it's differentiable at that point x naught. We say it's differentiable in the interval if it's differential, differentiable at all the points in that interval, and so forth. Uh, so if f is differentiable at that point x naught, we can show that f has to be continuous at that point x naught. Uh, so since f is differentiable, we have some f prime at x naught such that f of x minus f of x naught over x minus x naught minus f prime of x naught. The absolute value of that is less than some e1 for uh, x minus x naught less than delta 1. So if they're close enough, uh, the fraction fx over f x naught over x minus x naught will get arbitrarily close to our limit. Uh, and so by multiplying by x minus x naught, we have this uh, inequality here. Uh, and so f of x minus f of x naught is f of x minus f of x naught minus f prime x minus x naught plus f prime x minus x naught, which by the triangle inequality is less than or equal to absolute value of fx minus fx naught minus f prime x naught times x minus x naught. Uh, plus absolute value of f prime x naught times x minus x naught. But from our previous inequality, this will be less than or equal to absolute value of e1 plus f prime x naught uh, times absolute value of x minus x naught. And so now we just need to take x, x minus x naught less than the minimum of uh, delta 1 or e over e1 plus absolute value of f uh, prime x naught. And so and that would give us uh, f of x minus f of x naught uh, less than e for any e greater than zero. And so that proves that f of x has to be continuous at that point. So one often used result, uh, so if f is defined in some open subset of the reals, and it has a maximum or minimum at some point x naught on this open subset which is defined, and if we, as, if we know that f is dif differentiable at this max or min, then we'll have the f prime at x naught will have to equal zero. Can't be positive or negative, because that would contradict it having a max or min at that point. Uh, so, uh, if we assume f prime of x naught does not equal zero at our point uh, x naught, then we, so we have some uh, delta greater than zero, so it's that for x minus x naught less than delta, we have uh, f of x minus f of x naught over x minus x naught uh, approaches f prime of x naught, the absolute value of their difference being less than f prime of x naught over two. Uh, but this implies that inequality f of, f of x minus f of x naught over x minus x naught will be greater than uh, a prime of x naught minus uh, absolute value f prime of x naught over two, and it will be uh, less than f prime of x naught plus absolute value of f prime x naught over two. And regardless of uh, whether f prime of x naught is positive or negative, uh, this will imply uh, that f of x minus f of x naught over x minus x naught is going to be somewhere between uh, f prime of x naught over two and f and three over two times f prime of x naught. So it's gonna. So this, the main point we want from here is that this fraction is gonna have a constant sign in our little open uh, set around x naught. But if this has constant sign, 
Uh, in one direction, x minus x naught is going to be positive. So in this case, uh, this is going to have one sign. And the, the other way, if x minus x naught is negative, this is going to have the opposite sign. And so there is a one direction in which f of x, f of x minus f of x naught is going to be greater than zero, and one direction in which f of x minus f of x naught is going to be less than zero. So this contradicts there being a max or min at this point, because we can find points that are greater or less than at our point. And so we see our initial assumption that f prime of x naught does not equal zero has to be false. And so f prime of x naught has to be equal zero. Uh, thanks for watching. Please check, check out centermath.org, check out our blog, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. If you like this video, please check out our other real analysis basic videos. Uh, thank you.